I am Karen Favaza Spencer, and Blood is Thicker Than Water is a review of a national toxicology program animal experiment on prenatal and postnatal fluoride neurotoxicity. For over 70 years, many scientists, doctors, and dentists have not only protested that the evidence against fluoridation was much more convincing than the evidence in favor of fluoridation, but also that the reports and studies written in support of fluoridation policy were biased and flawed. Given that community water fluoridation was a 1940s brainchild of the U.S. government and that fluoridation is still stalwartly promoted by the Department of Health and Human Services, it was perhaps inevitable that organizational bias would creep into the National Toxicology Program's multi-year investigation of prenatal and postnatal neurotoxicity. This paper identifies 10 major flaws in the 2018 animal experiment by McPherson et al., which is part of the NTP investigation, flaws that call into question the validity of this specific study and the integrity of an investigation charged with determining if a widespread policy of dosing the waters of approximately 75% of Americans with one of three types of industrial-grade fluoridation chemicals is a public health or public harm policy. The NTP investigation was initiated in 2015 at the request of dentists and organizations alarmed at the weight of evidence published in the previous 20 years that find neurotoxic and dental harm from even low-dose fluoride exposure. The first part of the NTP investigation, an animal literature review, found evidence for concern. Included in that literature review was a 1967 study by Elliott that identified long Evans hooded rats as a relatively fluoride tolerant animal model that did not show the effects of neurotoxicities typically seen in Wistar and other strains of rats. The NTP experiment only used long Evans hooded rats. The maternal rats were not given fluoridated water until after the first trimester of their pregnancy, and there was no simulation of the human bottle fed experience. The maternal milk was not monitored for fluoride concentrations, which is typically quite low and varies by species and strain. Only purified sodium fluoride was tested. Only male pups were used in this experiment. The NTP team conducted a number of standard cognitive tests, but did not thoroughly explore the effects or mechanisms identified in the NTP literature review, some of which were attributed to multigenerational effects which is a real-world experience of human males and females whose parents and grandparents have lived in communities fluoridated since the 1950s and 60s. The unexpected variability of fluoride in blood plasma of test groups further brings into question the reliability of the dosage in this study and its applicability to the experience of infants living in fluoridated communities, as the fluoride plasma levels in rats given 10 parts per million is higher than the group fed 20 parts per million. 20 parts per million is less than half the fluoride routinely used for animal experimentation in order to approximate the human experience. Another red flag is that although the NTP authors reported they found dental fluorosis in their animals, their images are not representative of the mild or worse fluorosis diagnosed in over half of American teens. The faint white area identified as mild dental fluorosis using magnification in the NTP study supplementary material is not typical of dental fluorosis in animal studies. It should be quantified as questionable. The NTP animal experiment failed to find any evidence of neurotoxicity, that it also failed to evoke definitive mild fluorosis, let alone the moderate and severe dental fluorosis that afflicts one in five American teens in the 21st century is an indictment of this flawed study as an ineffectual model for evaluating the prenatal and postnatal impact of fluoridation policy. Claims that the NTP animal experiment negates the many studies that find neurotoxic effects from prenatal, postnatal, and early childhood exposure to fluorides are unjustified. Furthermore, we propose organizational endorsement of community fluoridation is unjustifiable human experimentation.